Hello students, myself Savita, Department of Chemistry from RMA Science College for Women. In the earlier video, we have learned the chapter Soaps, Detergent and Waxes. In this chapter, we have defined what are soaps, what are the different types of soaps, separation of soap by hot process, and we have also defined what are the detergents, the type of the detergent, the differences between the soaps and the detergents. In this video, we are going to learn the cleansing action of soap and the differences between the soaps and the detergents. We know the main function of a soap is the clean the dirt. So whenever we take a sodium soap and dissolve in the water, it dissociates to give or it breaks up to give the anion and a cation. So we know very well the soap contains the stearyl uh, fatty acid and a sodium salt of a fatty acid where it has a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end. So when a soap is dissolved in a water, its hydrophobic end attaches to the dirt which is present on the cloth and it removes. Later, the soap molecules arrange themselves in a circular fashion where their long hydrophobic faces towards the dirt and the hydrophilic molecule points towards the outside, I mean outside the water molecule. Such a type of arrangement results in the formation of a measles. So, this measles remains suspended in the water. Later, by a, just a few mechanical action, this dirt, which is entrapped in the soap molecule, gets free and hence the fabric is free from the dirt. And this is the way in which the soap acts as a cleansing agent. So when I take the soap, this soap solution is poured onto a dirty cloth or a greasy dish. The hydrocarbon tail of a soap molecule dissolves the oily or a greasy layer. The greasy layer with soap which is fed into the water and it is dislodged by the mechanical action of rubbing, tumbling or boiling. Once loosened, the grease layer breaks into a tiny globules and each having a head and a tail, and this ripple each other and later by the mechanical action, this is removed from the dirt and hence this mechanism soaps are capable of functioning as a cleansing agent for removing the greasy dirt from the skin, fabric, floor and crockery. So coming in detail about the cleansing action of the soap, the soaps and detergent as we all know they are very much similar in this structure where they have a large hydrocarbon chain which is ripples the water and hence we consider to be it as a hydrophobic chain and it has on the other hand a water loving that is the hydrophilic end. So the cleansing action of a soap depends on the amphiphatic nature of the soap or a detergent. So whether we take a soap or a detergent, both of them have an hydrophilic head and a long hydrocarbon chain 
in both the soaps and in the detergent. So we have a sodium cation attached to COO minus a hydrophilic in the case of the soap, whereas in the detergent it is the sodium which is attached to a sulfate that is the hydrophilic. And the cleansing action of both soaps and detergent result from their ability to lower the surface tension of water, which emulsifies the oil or a grease, and it holds them in the suspension in water. This ability is due to the structure of a soap or a detergent, which we have just looked into the. So generally when we take your soaps or the detergent, as I said, we are going to lower the surface tension of water or we are considered as surface active agent and this surface active agent because of this structure will a hydrophobic tail and an hydrophilic head. So in aqueous solution the surfactant molecules, that is the soaps and detergents, tend to form the mesial structure which makes them to keep together and align themselves in a circular fashion. Later, they are removed by the mechanical scrubbing or the washing. Now, let us take the soap as an example and understand the process of cleansing action of the soap. So as we know a soap is a sodium salt of a long fatty acid like sodium palm tea. So when we take the soap and dissolve in water it results in the formation of an anion that is the palmitate ion and a sodium cation. So, for example, here we have taken the soap to be the sodium palmitate upon ionization in water or aqueous media. We get an anion with a low hydrocarbon chain and a carboxylate ion that is carboxylate anion and along with that we have a sodium ion and as we know the soap anion will contain a long hydrocarbon chain with a carboxylate group at one end. The hydrocarbon chain is hydrophobic and it is soluble in oil or the grease. The ionic part of the carboxylate group is hydrophilic and this is soluble in water. Similarly, when we take the detergent in the water, I mean the aqueous, so here we have taken the detergent sodium alkyl sulfate will also undergo dissociation in an aqueous solution to give the alkyl sulfate ion that is the anion and a sodium ion which is very much similar to the source. So here we can take the detergent the example either the sodium alkyl sulfate or sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate which is also an example for a detergent. In either case we get an anion and a cation and here the anion can be an alkyl sulfate when we take sodium alkyl sulfate when we take sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate, it is alkyl benzene sulfonate ion. So either of the anion, like we have observed in the case of the soap, we have a long hydrocarbon chain with a benzene or without a benzene ring 
which is hydrophobic in nature and at one end we have a hydrophilic that is the sulfate ion and this is hydrophilic and this is a hydrophobic. Similarly, as I just discussed, either of the alkyl sulfate or alkaline benzene have a hydrophobic part and a hydrophilic part. Now, let us explain in detail the mechanism of cleansing action of a soap or a detergent on a piece of cloth which has a greasy stain. So, as seen in the earlier slides, it's a very clear a soap or a detergent contains an anion part and that anion part is hydrophobic and it has a hydrophilic part also at one end. So, soap or detergent will reduce the surface tension of the water. Therefore, when soap or a detergent is added to the cloth, the cloth is wetted thoroughly. The hydrophobic part of the soap or detergent anion or soluble in greasy or the dirt which is stuck on the cloth. Whereas the hydrophilic part of the anion or soluble in water. Hence, in aqueous solution, we know water molecules are polar in nature. As a result, this surrounds the ions, uh, but not the hydrocarbon part of the molecule. And hence, the water molecule are surrounded around the hydrophilic part of the soap or a detergent. When a soap or detergent is rubbed on a cloth containing the greasy or the dirty material. So, upon the soaps or detergent dissolved in water, because of the hydrophobic and hydrophilic, this molecule associate together as a cluster and these clusters are called as mesons. So here, if this is the oily or the dirt, so it is also a non, it's not soluble in water and hence the hydrophobic part of the soap or detergent gets surrounded around the oily whereas the hydrophilic part of the soap or detergent are going to freeze outside and hence we can see in a micellar formation all the tails are inverse and the heads are facing the outside the molecule and such an arrangement is called as missile. So a missile is formed by the detergent or a soap in water. The hydrocarbon chain gets stuck to the oily or the greasy part on the fabric or on the cloth. So during the cleansing, the hydrocarbon chain attaches itself to the oily dirt. So when I shake the water vigorously, the oily dirt tends to lift off the dirty surface and get dissociated into fragments. This gives an opportunity to other tails to stick to the oil. The solution now contains small globules of oil which is surrounded by the detergent molecule. The negatively charged heads 
are facing the outside and are present in water molecule and this prevents the small globules from coming together to form aggregate and the dirt is easily removed. Or in one sentence I can say the soap or the detergent measle entraps the oily dirt molecule or the particulate matter. And this is the scenario where we can see the dirt inside with a hydrophobic tail surrounding it and a hydrophilic or to place outside the vessels. By just scrubbing or mechanical aggregation, it will help to remove the grease away from the cloth and it is broken into small droplets. And there will be a repulsion between this droplet to when, when it is suspended in water and this results in the formation of the emulsion and thus the droplets do not once again redeposit on the cloth because of the repulsion and rinsing this remove the droplets along with the dirt. Now, with understanding the cleansing action of soap, let us look to the differences between the soaps and detergents. We know very well because of the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic nature of the soaps and upon dissociation to form an ion and a cation, soaps and detergents are excellent cleaning agent. However, when we take in hard water, we know the hard water contains large amount of calcium and magnesium ions. So, when is soap, for example, sodium stearate is dissolved in the hard water which contains the calcium or the magnesium ion, this calcium will react with the soap to form the scum that is insoluble calcium stearate. If it is with the calcium or with the magnesium, it results in the insoluble magnesium stearate. Because of the formation of this soap scum, this reduces the amount of the soap which is available for cleaning and hence results in the wastage of soap and this is the reason soaps are only suitable when we take the soft water so we know the soft water contains little or no calcium and magnesium ions so because of the absence of this it does not result in the formation of the scum and hence it is very effective to remove the dirt. So with this we conclude that a soap is a good cleaning agent only in soft water. It cannot be used very effectively when we take the hot water. Reason being the calcium and the magnesium ions present in the hard water results in the formation of the scum which makes the less availability of the soap for the cleaning action and hence the soaps are not good cleansing agent with the hot water but they are very good cleansing agent with the soft and the other major disadvantage of the soap is when we use the acidic water. So acidic water, it means the water contains H plus ion. So whenever a soap is applied in an acidic water, the H plus ion 
reacts with this so which are your long chain fatty acid and this long chain fatty acid upon reacting with an H plus result in the formation of the insoluble steric acid and this reduces once again the amount of soap which for cleaning purpose and it also for a higher mass and hence the effectiveness of the cleaning action of soap is reduced in the presence of an acidic water. Now let us look what would the detergents do in the presence of hard water. So here we have taken the detergent sodium lutein and sulfate and in the presence of an hard water which contains the calcium and magnesium ion they form a product that is calcium dodectyl sulfate but they are soluble substances and hence it does not form any scum. This means a detergent will still perform its cleansing action in the hard water and hence a detergent is more effective than a soap in hard water. Similarly, this detergent can also be used in acidic water because there is no formation of an insoluble compound which we have seen with the case of soap. For example, when I take the detergent sodium dodecyl sulfate in acidic water, it results in the formation of a soluble dodecyl sulfonic acid and hence its effectiveness is not affected. So a detergent can be used with the case of a hard water as well as in the acidic water. Now let us talk about the differences between the soaps and detergent. So when we come to its chemical nature, we know very well soaps are sodium or potassium salts of long chain monocarboxylic acid which are called as fatty acid. So when we come to the chemistry of the detergent, they are also sodium salts but not of long fatty acid but long chain benzene sulfonic acid or an alkyl benzene sulfate. When we come to the occurrence, soaps are obtained by natural resources that is the fatty acids are the sources from plants and animals but when we come to your detergent they are synthetic materials hydrocarbons of petroleum or coal and that is the reason we also call the detergents to be the synthetics. So in the case of hard water which contain calcium and magnesium salt they are insoluble in water but here they are soluble in water. They produce the scum which I have explained in the earlier uh, slides but hard water does not form the scum and hence it is effective cleansing action even in the hard water. And when we take the environmental purpose, soaps are biodegradable. The effectiveness of the cleansing action of the soap is also reduced when used in acidic water. But we know a few detergents like long chain or a branded chain detergents are non-biodegradable. But however, 
detergents do not form precipitate in acidic water and hence the capacity is not altered when I use an acidic water in the case of a detergent. So it's a very common observation. Soaps cannot produce a lather in hard water and this condition results in the wastage of the soaps. But when you take a detergent, it gives a good lather. Either it's a soft or an hard water and it is more effective in the cleansing action. So these are the few differences between soaps and detergents and these are the few references for this chapter. Thank you.